नमस्ते माय नेम इज चिन्मय देशपांडे इन दिस व्हिडिओ लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ टॉपिक फ्रॉम न्यूमेरिकल इंटीग्रेशन टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट अ डेरिवेशन ऑफ सिम्पसन्स 3 बाय 8 रूल फॉर न्यूमेरिकल इंटीग्रेशन लेट अस कंसीडर दैट देयर इज अ इंटीग्रल i इक्वल टू इंटीग्रेशन x0 टू xn f ऑफ x dx व्हिच इज टू बी सॉल्व here we will have values in the tabulator format related with a function y equal to f of x means we have suppose x0 corresponding value is y0 then x1 y1 up to we will have a value of xn and y now the difference between these two values that is h will be equal to x1 minus x0 which is nothing but which which will be a equally spaced data h is nothing but a step size equally spaced is nothing but distance between each and every value of a x is same so let us consider that this will be a curve now this will be x axis this will be y axis if you see the curve which is drawn here let me trace this curve so that it will be easy for you this will be your original curve so i can say that let me complete this curve okay so whatever this will be a original curve that is y equal to f of x now if you see if i take some points a b c d let's say this will be your point a now uh, corresponding x axis value is x0 y axis value here if you see it will be y0 let us take this point as a b with x0 sorry with x1 and y1 corresponding value of a y is y1 then this will be your c which which will be of x2 comma y2 and this you will get as a d which will be of x3 comma y3 here by mistake i have written y2 it should be x3 so y3 now let the given curve is approximated as a third degree polynomial between the points a b c and d so this will be a third degree polynomial curve now from the diagram it is clear that we will get a curve is of having third degree polynomial now if the area under this third degree polynomial curve is to be determined then what we have to do we have this three particular things integration from x0 to x1 then from x1 to x2 then from x2 to x3 then only we will be able to find it out a total area under the curve so let me write it as integration x0 to x3 f of x dx we have to determine now already we have gone through newton's coarse quadrature formula so this will be integration x0 to xn f of x dx equal to n into h into bracket y0 plus n by 2 delta y0 plus 2n square minus 3n upon 12 delta square y0 plus n cube minus 4n square plus 4n upon 24 delta cube of y0 now if you see as it is approximated to a third degree polynomial so we will take here n equal to 3 so please remember this question might be asked during oral examination how you will get simpson's 3 by 8 rule what will be the value of n that we have to substitute in newton's coarse quadrature formula so that value should be n equal to 3 so let me prepare this difference table we have n equal to 3 so we will have corresponding x0 y0 x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 value we know that how to find it out del y del y0 y1 minus y0 del y1 y2 minus y1 del y3 sorry del y2 is y3 minus y2 similarly what is del square y0 it is it is nothing but what del y1 minus del y0 means y2 minus y1 minus y1 plus y0 so you will get what y2 minus 2y1 plus y0 and here if you see for delta square y1 it will be what this value minus this value that is delta y2 minus delta y1 means what it will be y3 minus y2 minus y2 plus y1 we are sir, we are uh, sub, we are what we are doing this minus this term. so we are subtracting second from first so what you will get you will get it as y3 minus 2 y2 plus y1 similarly we will be finding out delta cube of y0 which is this minus this that is delta square y1 minus delta square y0 so we will get this term 
Now, if you see from the table, we don't have this value delta is to 4, delta is to 5. So, therefore, how we can write this? What to do? In this equation, put n equal to 3 in all places. So, you will get it here, 3 into h, y0 will be as it is. Here, if you put n equal to 3, you will get 3 by 2 delta y0. So, let me open just a minute. 3 by 2 delta y0. So, you will get this 3 by 2 delta y0. Then, if you put here n equal to 3, then what it will be? 2, 3 cube minus 3 into 3 divided by 12. So, if you do it, 2 into 9 minus 9 divided by 12, 18 minus 9. So, it will be 9 by 12 means 3 by 4. So, here you will get this term as 3 by 4. And when you put here, n equal to 3, you will get the answer as 1 by 8 delta cube of y0. Now, we people have seen that, what is this? If you see now here, this will be at denominator, this is 2, this is 4, this is 8. So, what we will do? We will take 8 outside. So, if we take outside, it will be what? If we take 8 outside, it will be 3h by 8. So, here you will get 8 into y0. Here we need to multiply by 4 to denominator for getting 8. So, here also we need to multiply by 4. So, you will get 12. Here we have to multiply by 2. So, here also we need to multiply by 2. So, it will be 6 delta square y0 plus delta cube of y0. Now, already we have seen that. What is delta y0? It is y1 minus y0. So, substitute here in place of delta y0, we will get y1 minus y0. In place of delta square y0, we will get y2 minus 2y1 plus y0. And in place of delta cube of y0, we will get y3 minus 3y2 plus 3y1 minus y0. So, if you rearrange this equation, we will get it as 3h by 8 into bracket y0 plus 3y1 plus 3y2 plus y3. If we have limits from x0 to x3. Similarly, instead of having a, b, c, d, if we get a point e, f, g, h, then we will get it from integration x3 to x6. If you compare with this formula, you will be able to write it. When we have here x0, we have here y0. So, when we have here x3, we will get here y3. Then, after next value of y0 is y1, y2, y3. Next value of y3 is y4, y5, y6. And in between middle here, it, it will be multiplied by 3. So, here also you will get it as a multiply by 3. Now, in general, for n, how we can write? When it is from x3 to x6, we have written the formula. When it is from x0 to x3, we have written a formula. So, in general, when we get from x of n minus 3 to x10, we will get a formula as 3h by 8 into bracket y of n minus 3 plus 3y of n minus 2 plus 3y of n minus 1 plus y3. But we know that what is integration x0 to xn? We have to add this. Integration x0 to x3 f of x plus integration x3 to x6 f of x. Like that up to we have to do it. Integration x of n minus 3 to integration xn f of x. So what we will do? So if we try to substitute this term, we will get this term. Already we have seen. If we try to substitute this term, integration x3 to x6 f of x, we will get this term, okay. And when we try to substitute this term, which is from 1.16, we will get this term. So, if you write a formula, how we will write it? This will be your end formula for Simpson's 3 by 8. It will be what? 3h by 8 into bracket y0 plus yn, that is sum of first and last ordinate of a y plus 2 into y3 plus y6 plus y9 up to dot 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 that is 2 into sum of all remaining ordinates of a y please remember which are multiple of 3 plus 3 into y1 plus y2 plus y4 plus y5 if you carefully observe there is no any term which comes in a table of a 3 so you can write it as plus 3 into sum of all remaining ordinates of a y which are not multiple of a 3. So, this will be your formula of Simpson's 3 by 8 rule. Now, please remember, while using this formula, the given interval of an integration must be divided into the sub-intervals whose number n is a multiple of a 3. 
So how we can remember? You can remember it like this. X is nothing but what? Sum of extreme ordinates. Extreme means first and the last. Y0 plus Y. Plus 2 into T. T means what? Which are multiple of a 3. So that's why here we have written 3. And 2 into R which are remaining terms which are non-multiple of a 3. So that's why here we have written remaining terms R. Now let's discuss what is the step, what are the steps to solve the problem of Simpson's 3 by 8. First we have to write a given function y equal to f of x and write the number of intervals. If it is mentioned in the uh, numerical, what is the number of intervals, then it should be n. If number of ordinates are given, then from that we will be able to find it out number of interval as ordinate minus 1. Now based on this, we have to find it out step size h will be equal to xn minus x0 divided by n. Sometimes in a problem, number of intervals will be given, so in that you will be able to find it out h from this formula. Sometimes in the problem, h should be given, so in that you will be able to find it out n, which is equal to xn minus x0 divided by h. Just what we did, shift this n to this side, shift h to this side. Then, from that we have to determine the tabulated value of x and y. Now this y will be equal to what? Which will be equal to your given function f of x. And you have to draw the table from the limit x0 to xn and its corresponding value from y0 to yn. So how to find it out x1? It will be equal to x0 plus h. How to find it out x2? It will be equal to x1 plus h. Like that you have to find it out the value of xn. And step number 4 is you just have to write down formula either in this way or you write it in this way. Whatever values you will get it here, you substitute. So y0 plus yn plus 2 into multiple of a 3, y3 plus y6 plus y9 plus 3 into non-multiple of a 3, that is y1 plus y2 plus y4 plus y5 up to next value. Please remember that you have to take value of a y only once in the formula. Means what? Suppose here, let's say, suppose you uh, you have a value here y6. So you have to take it here only y6. Don't take it here. Even though it is a multiple of a 3, don't take it here. Values of a y, or y ordinates, it should be taken in the formula 1. So this is what is a detailed discussion about Simpson's 3 by 8 rule. The question might be asked for 6 or 8 marks. Derive Simpson's 3 by 8 rule for numerical integration using Newton's course quadrature formula and hence draw its diagram, draw its waveform. So it is necessary to draw a waveform while deriving this expression. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any doubt, please feel free to ask any question. Thanks a lot.